the most important thing you need to know in your personal finances and business finances are these four major numbers. Your income, your monthly net income, your monthly expenses, that is everything. So an expense is everything that leaves your checking account. If you save money, that's an expense. If you invest money, that's an expense. If you tithe, if you give, that is an expense. Your housing, your living expenses, your debt payments, those are expense. Everything and anything that leaves your checking account is an expense. So document it. Stop fooling yourself. Okay. So you need to know your monthly net income, your monthly expenses, the total amount of debt you have. You could be possibly debt free watching this. If you are, I still want you to look at the debt that you do have that is at zero balance, right? Which could mean a bunch of different credit cards a personal line of credit, a home equity line of credit, an all-in-one loan. These are debt leveraging. Uh, um, maybe it's uh, you know access to debt where you can go to the bank and get a million dollars at any given time or half a million dollars. That's debt leveraging. Calculate that. If you are in debt, calculate it. Last but not least, one of the most important things that creates financial freedom, in my opinion, is cash flow, right? What is your monthly cash flow? What are you averaging per month? Be conservative so that you can create, uh, so that you can underperform over deliver, right? So you want to underperform because you want to account for errors, unexpected expenses, emergencies, and things like that. But for the most part, when you know your monthly net income, you know your expenses, you know your debt and cash flow, it's very hard to fool you when it comes to knowing your numbers. So that is one of the most fundamental rules right there. Before you do velocity banking, please know your numbers. I don't talk to anybody unless they give me my unless they give me their numbers. I'm not interested unless you know your numbers. Because at the end of the day, I am not a financial coach. I'm a consultant. I'm a strategist. I'm a specialist. I need numbers. You give me what you're working with, what your goals are, I create the strategy. But I'm not going to coach you because that's not my style, it's not my expertise just yet. So I'm not exactly a coach. I hold coach to a high standard. I believe personally, in order to be a phenomenal expert coach, you need to have 10,000 hours practiced into that craft. So me personally, I have about maybe a good, maybe two to 3,000 hours of practicing personal finance right? If that. Uh, so I've got a long way to go before I declare myself an expert. It'll probably be about a good five to seven years before you hear me utter the words expert. Although people call me an expert or call me a guru, an influencer, and that's fine and dandy, but I'm letting you know personally from the horse's mouth. Look, you know, I'm not an expert by any means. I'm 25 years old. I've got a lot to learn, but even more to give at the end of the day. So you need to know your four major numbers. The, the, the next uh, piece of information you need to know is what your debt tool is going to be. And I wrote down the different debt tools that we use in the velocity banking world. You've got credit cards, both secured and unsecured. You've got personal line of credit, personal secured, secured personal line of credit, so secured and unsecured, HELOC, home equity line of credit, not a home equity loan, home equity line of credit, first or second position. You have an all-in-one loan, which is a checking account, a HELOC, and a loan all-in-one, all-in-one product, right? And last but not least is a cash value life insurance policy, right? Uh, and there's different segments in that as well, but I just want to kind of generally label it cash value life insurance. These are all potential tools that you can use to accelerate debt or debt leverage to invest and multiply your income. So you're going to want to decide what tool do I want to acquire. And in order to acquire any of the four tools right here, 
you need to have a good credit score. The cash value life insurance policy, we don't need to have a credit score. It's a private account. But these four products and up, you need to have a decent credit score. What is a decent credit score? I personally would like to see a 720 or higher. Personally. Now, that doesn't mean you can't get access to any of these tools below 720. What it does mean is you may pay a higher rate if you are below 720. You might pay a higher rate. And then I can pretty much guarantee you that if you have a 720 or higher, 750s, 800 or more, you're going to get the best rates. The lower rate your debt tool is, the faster velocity banking will move in your favor. So with that being said, recap, you need to know your four major numbers. You need to know which debt tool you're going to use. Here are the products right here. You need to have a decent credit score, 720 or higher, preferably does not mean you cannot get these. But like I said, the lower the rate is on your debt tool, the faster your concept will flow for you. All right. Next thing is the rules of velocity banking. These are rules that I've established for myself personally. There are other rules and other practices in the game. Don't get me wrong. Right. So this isn't to say that if you don't follow these rules, you're not going to get success. What it does say is if you follow these rules, your chances of success shall increase uh, much higher and will really help you evaluate numbers. OK, so the very first rule is after, you know, your four major numbers, right? Knowing your numbers. I didn't really put the rules in order, but um, you need to know your numbers, right? And once you know your numbers, you'll be able to tell me what your cash flow times 12 is in a year. So if it's 500 bucks a month times that by 12, that's $6,000. If it's 15,000 a month times 12, that is what, 180,000? Yes, it is. Got my math right. It's $180,000 in cash flow. So you can either be as low as 6,000 a month in cash flow. I mean, 6,000 a year in cash flow is as high as 180, whatever the number is, right? Get it, times it by 12. Once you have that number, put it off to the side. The next thing we're going to do is we need a measuring stick. We need a ruler, right? We need a ruler to determine whether or not borrowing from Peter to pay Paul makes any sense. For example, Peter is here. Paul is here. Paul is charging me 1%. I need to pay off Paul. That, let's say that's my goal. I have a debt with Paul at 1%. Let's say your, your, your desire is to pay off Paul. You go to Peter. Peter is charging you a 10% rate. Does it make sense to borrow from Peter to pay Paul right here? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But let's flip the script. Let's say I can borrow from Peter at 1% and Paul is charging me 10. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. From a practical standpoint, not even including velocity banking, if all I did was borrow from Peter at 1% to pay off Paul at 10%, my friends, that is a very simple concept called debt consolidation. Right? It, it, it's not crazy. There's nothing to it. If you go from, if you owe 10,000 at 10% and you borrow 10,000 at 1%, you're a winner. You're going to pay off that debt a lot faster if I just stayed with Paul. So I did get debt consolidation. What Velocity Banking does is simply takes all your income and starts to pay Paul as opposed to just your cash flow per month. So if I showed you a way that you could use all of your income to pay off debt and still live, pay your bills and do all those things, obviously you would say, well, 2000 is a lot more than 500 a month. I'm going to go faster. Okay. So that is a very simple way of creating our measuring stick. You need a ruler. So the ruler that we use to measure whether or not velocity banking makes any sense whatsoever 
is the debt snowball concept. What is the debt snowball concept? I simply take my extra cash flow per month and I apply it towards my smallest debt. And I work my way up to the next debt, to the next debt, to the next debt, creating a snowball effect down a mountain where I have this huge snowball into a boulder, right? And it creates a lot of momentum, a lot of speed, a lot of wins early on in the game. So what we're doing essentially is if you are in debt, say $500,000, and you ran the numbers just from debt snowball, you take your monthly cash flow, whatever it is per month, apply it towards your smallest debt, and you go bomb, 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 bomb. You can put it in a spreadsheet or you can write it out. So you literally just, you know, if your cash flow is 500 bucks and you have a debt that's 10,000, the monthly payment is 300, you're paying in total $800 towards that 10,000. 10,000 divided by 800, you'll be debt free from that debt in 12.5 months. Now, obviously this will be actually faster than 12.5 months because the interest the fat, the more principal you pay towards interest, that actually, you know, boils down to like maybe 11 to 10 months because you're paying less interest in advance. You're getting away from the interest. The 10,000 was the principal. The 10% is the extra thousand bucks on the 10. But if I get ahead of it, I don't have to pay it, which allows you to obviously pay off the debt faster. So you do that right? You do your debt snowball method, you run the numbers, you check it out, and then you get a, you get an overall statistic saying, okay, uh, in order to pay off 500k doing debt snowball, I'll be debt free in 10 years, right? And that's almost as guaranteed of a number as you can get. The only thing that would harm this in a negative way is if you what lose your job have an emergency unexpected expense vacation holidays birthdays right this is why people don't get out of debt so fast so it actually turns into 12 13 14 15 years to get out of debt but still it's a lot better than 30 years correct so debt snowball can typically bring you 50 percent i want to say about 50 percent faster if you just did nothing, right? If you compared nothing, just paying the monthly minimum payment on everything versus debt snowball, you could definitely go at least 50% faster, no doubt in my mind. So let's say 10 years was the mark. All Velocity Banking needs to do is beat it by 10 years, but we don't just want to beat 10 years by say six months, right? Or one year, because that's not big enough of a window to convince, say me, to do velocity banking. Although 12 months is a lot better, right? Nine years is better than 10 years, no doubt about it. So I'll probably, I would still probably do the one that goes faster, but I wanna make sure I improve what that, what that alternative is because I desire to go fast and, and be very effective. So ideally, I want to go at least 30 to 50% or more faster than my measuring stick of that snowball. So I want to be done in like five to seven years. That's a big difference. Three years, 36 months, five years, 60 months faster without any change in the numbers itself, right? That's what you need to pay attention to is take away the 10X, take away increasing your income, take away being frugal and all that stuff. Just go off what you're currently operating in today, run the numbers, both debt snowball and velocity, and see where you end up. And then you add being frugal, cutting back, you know, increasing my income, getting a promotion, redirecting cash flow, recapturing costs, right? You, because those additions into your personal finance, you could do with either strategy. 
So when you're listening to somebody that promotes debt snowball, or you're listening to somebody that promotes velocity banking, you want to make sure that they're basing it off just the current numbers. Because if they use being frugal, cutting back, right, and all these little things, well, I could do that as well. So we don't want to use that as a persuasion tool, as a sales tool to maybe keep someone from doing something, right? Because I can do what you do, if not better, right? Uh, so we don't want to, you know, stay stuck in that uh, way of thinking. So that is our measuring stick. So you need a measuring stick. What's the measuring stick? That snowball. Got it? The next thing is in addition to grabbing your main debt tool that you're going to acquire, you're definitely going to want to have a credit card to pay bills that comes with cash back rewards. Say for example, you're somebody that has a HELOC against your property. And let's say that's your main debt tool, right? In addition to having this HELOC, you also want to have a credit card that has anywhere in the neighborhood of 1% to 3% cash back. And sometimes there's some as high as 5%. And I've got cards that go higher than that too in the crypto space. But the average that I see is 1% to 3%. You can definitely get 2 and 3 very easily with a lot of different credit cards. And so you want to have a credit card to pay or to run most of your bills. You want this credit card to be at a zero balance, preferably, right? So let's say you found a card at 3% cash back on everything, right? If that's the case, then, uh, you know, more realistically, let's go with 2%. 2% cash back on everything. Let's say you've got $4,000 worth of bills each and every month and these are bills that can be paid with a credit card with no fees. So every single month, you're earning $80 on money that's already leaving your economy. $80 times 12, that's $960 back into your economy. That's $960 that helps you pay off debt that much faster. In the debt snowball world, you can't do this. This is not what they teach, right? So just by doing this, I now have something over debt snowball that they can't do, right? Because they don't teach that. They teach you to go like this, to cut the credit card. You have to cut all your plastic. That's what they teach you. Cut them up. You pay them off, cut them up, and you close them, right? So this is something, this is $960 that allows me to go faster than debt snowball. Do 960 times five years. That's $4,800 additional that I'm able to uh, put towards paying off debt. So that alone, I can beat you in terms of debt snowball versus say Velocity Banking, I'll, I'll beat you just off of that. And then a lot of these credit cards come with a statement credit. Spend 3,000 or more, spend 5,000 or more, and get $200 back. So in addition to the 48, add another 200 for spending X amount of dollars. Now I'm at 5,000 total, right? So you wanna have your main debt tool that you're gonna use for Velocity Banking. You wanna have your sub debt tool, which is a credit card that you're gonna run your general monthly bills religiously. And then another really cool slick move, which I love to do, is I go and get a credit card at 0% for at least 12 months. Yes, could go higher but at least 12 months. These are not difficult to find. 
and I find a credit card at 0% for 12 months on purchases, right? Now, the 0% for 12 months on purchases, I then look at my expenses that can be paid with a credit card with no fees, and I target all of my bills that can switch from monthly to annual, right? So let's say you've got $7,000 worth of bills that you religiously pay every single month, no matter what, it's the same 7,000, you know, uh, uh, of bills that you're gonna pay every single month. It ain't going nowhere, right? Now, in that 7,000, you've got, say, 20 different bills that you pay monthly in the 7,000. So let's say you got 20 separate bills that you pay religiously every single month, seven grand, right? Well, of the 7,000, which is divided up into 20 different bills, let's say you've got 10 of them that you could switch to an annual payment right and i'll just keep the number the same because you know you're you're switching it up or whatever let's just say with the 10 bills if you um paid it annually you could save an average over those 10 bills you could save about 10 percent just from switching from monthly to annual you could save 10 percent on these specific 10 bills, and let's say that total equaled uh, $10,000, right? So if the total on the monthly spectrum was 10 grand, and you're telling me I can save 10%, that's a thousand bucks. Yes? So that means my net output if I switch from monthly to annual is actually $9,000, right? So what ends up happening is you can delegate certain bills that you're gonna pay monthly that cannot be switched to annual through here, through this one card, and you're gonna get your cash back rewards roughly one to 3% or even higher than that. And then once a year, every year, you'll apply for one credit card, 0% for 12 months. You'll turn on, you'll switch from monthly to annual. You'll save an additional thousand bucks. And then what you'll do is you'll pay the minimum monthly payment for 11 months. And then when the time comes, you'll pay that off in full on the 12th month. Why do we do that? Because that zero percent. It's not costing me anything to carry the debt for 11 months. It's not costing me anything to do it. So I'm simply pushing the bill, getting cash back or savings $1,000 cash back rewards, roughly one to 3% or higher. Doing these two things alone, my goodness, I am ahead of you by quite a bit. That's a thousand times that by five years, that's another five grand that I can be throwing towards debt. Okay, so the rules, recap, know your numbers. Four major numbers. Pick your debt tool. You need to know your credit score. Cash flow times 12. I haven't discussed that really yet, but you need to know what your cash flow times 12 is. We went over your measuring tool, which is debt snowball. We went over the additional tools, credit cards to pay bills, get cash back rewards, switch from monthly to annual to simply save a bunch of money. Now let's go into the 66% rule. 
Let's say you've got a HELOC at $50,000, okay? This is where debt leveraging comes into play. And I say, all right, 50,000 times 66% is 33,000 bucks. So I have a personal rule when it comes to leveraging debt, which is I will not go over 66% leveraged on my credit. And I have a couple of rules that can violate that sometimes, but majority of the time, I will safely leverage 66% to chunk. What are we chunking at? Typically, we're chunking at a bad debt. I'm borrowing 33 grand from Peter to pay off Paul, right? When I borrow from Peter, let's say I'm paying 3%. I pay off Paul, who was charging me 7, 9, 12, 15%. I consolidate. I still owe 33, but now I'm paying 4%, 5%, 6%, 7% less in interest. And then I'm going to do velocity banking. All my income will go into this main debt tool. When I go to pay my bills, I've already delegated and allocated what is going to be switched to monthly, what bills are going to go through this main credit card. That allows more of my income to sit in the main debt tool, which is also lowering my borrowing cost. And then when you do the overall math, we go from paying 3% to actually paying zero because we offset it with cashback rewards, switching from monthly to annual, dumping all income in, reducing the actual rate that I'm being charged on a daily basis. These are all things you cannot do in the debt snowball world. And if we just did these things, I will beat you. Then if you just made extra payments, you cannot refute that. These are facts. Now it's a matter of the application, the execution, right? I'm telling, look, this alone is complex in nature. Pretty straightforward, simple in execution. Once you get the complexities of it, once it clicks, after you've watched so many videos, it'll click and you'll be like, oh my God, where have I been? Where have I been, right?